What's up math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W and today we're going to go over question 19 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past year. We're just supposed to find out what value of x satisfies this monstrosity of an equation. But we can use some tricks to simplify it and get it down to a manageable and actually reasonable um, form. To do a question like this, you'll need to know how to simplify expressions and specifically we'll be using the distributed property and combining like terms and you'll also need to know what to do with an equation if you have a variable on both sides. So let's go ahead and start working through this and we'll start with the distributive property. I'll remind myself that if I see 12 multiplied by some stuff in parentheses that's being added or subtracted, I need to do 12 times x, which is 12x, minus 12 times 2, which is 24, and then I left plus 3x alone. And now over here, I'll need to multiply 1 half times x, and then 1 half times 6, which would be plus, I keep my plus sign, and that's plus 3, plus 2. So now I can see that I have some like terms that I need to combine. For instance, I've got 12x plus 3x, and then I've got plus 3 and plus 2. So let's go ahead and combine those, and I'll write out the next form of my equation over here on the left. 12x plus 3x is like $12 plus $3. That's $15, or 15x minus 24 equals 1 half x plus 3 plus 2 is 5. So 15x minus 24 equals 1 half x plus 5. All right, so now... Now that I see that I have an equation with a variable on both sides and just nothing else, variables and numbers, variables and numbers, I'm going to break out what I call my Volnor trick, where I say, all right, I want my variables on the left and then all my numbers on the right. So I look at what's going on here. I want to get my variables on the left, and I see 1 half x here on the right side. I don't like that it's on the right side, so I'm going to remind myself that it's positive 1 half x and subtract 1 half x. Positive 1 half x and then negative or minus 1 half x are going to cancel each other out. And then 15 minus 1 half. 15 minus 1 half, and I'm putting my 1 half in parentheses to make sure my calculator does what I want it to, and that's 14 and a half, or 14 and 5 tenths. So on my left side, I'm left with 14 and 5 tenths x. Now for my right side, I want all my numbers on my right side. So I see minus 24 on the left, and I think that's not good. I want to get rid of that. So I plus 24 and plus 24. Minus 24 and plus 24 cancel. And then uh, plus 5 and plus 24 I add together to get 29. I know that these two are equal. And once again, I just want to go back over like I've done with my other variable on both side questions. Um, we got rid of one term from each side of the equation. We started with 2 on the left and 2 on the right. Now we have just one term on the left and one term on the right. So we are perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Shout out to Thanos for saying a surprisingly mathematically correct statement for someone who wanted to wipe out half of all life. Um, but now, we just need to get rid of 14 and a half. Since it's being multiplied by x, I'm going to divide. 14 and a half divided by 14 and a half is going to cancel. It would turn into 1, but we don't need to write 1 if it's just 1x. So I'm left, let me scoot that up, with x equals, and now I just need to find out 29 divided by 14 and a half, which is 2. So I know that the value of x equals 2. I can go ahead and plug it in here, find my 2 bubble, and bubble that in. Now at this point, I want to do one more thing. I want to look back at the original equation. And actually check my answer. The way I'm going to do that 
is that here's my original equation with everything written in except for x. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 2 for x, figure out what both sides of this equation get me, and make sure that they're equal. Because in order for this answer to work, both sides of this have to be equal. So I can go ahead and use order of operations to figure out that this is 0, and 12 times 0 just equals 0. And I need a new marker. So 2 minus 2 is 0. 12 times 0 is 0, so I don't need that. 3 times 2 is 6. So my entire left side of the equation is going to get me 6, and I'm seeing if that equals 1 half times 2 plus 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. 1 half plus 8 equals 4. Or 1 half times 8 equals 4, and 4 plus 2 equals 6. Okay, so this makes me happy. After I put in the number 2, which I thought was my answer for x, I went ahead and actually figured out what an x value of 2 would give me for each side of the equation. Left side gave me 6, right side gave me 6. I didn't care what number this was as long as both sides were equal. It could have been 20, it could have been pi, it could have been a million, it could have been 0. But the fact is, this gave me 6 on both sides. That's what I want. That's how I know that 2 is actually my answer.